Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Marvel Dice Throne from Roxley Games and the OP. Marvel Dice Throne is a continuation of the Dice Throne franchise, bringing Marvel characters to the Dice Throne game, uh, season one, season two, and now they have a whole bunch of Marvel characters. They have Scarlet Witch, they have Thor, Loki, Spider-Man, we have Black Widow, Doctor Strange, we have Captain Marvel, and Black Panther over here for your Marvel and Dice Throne entertainment. As far as what Marvel Dice Throne is, as far as what the Dice Throne universe is doing, it's basically a Yahtzee-style game which you're going to be rolling dice to activate abilities to activate the specific abilities of your characters and to take your opponent down from 50 health down to zero before they do that to you. That's going to follow a specific turn structure, which is generally going to involve rolling dice. To be more specific, there's a specific sequence involving, well, let's go through the actual sequence. You're going to go through upkeep first every single round. Upkeep involves you gathering an extra combat point, an extra CP on your die dial, rotating that. The first player in the first round will not get that. After that, they'll go back and forth getting it. And then additionally, you'll draw an extra card to your already existing hand of four cards you start the game with. And these cards give you different abilities that will either modify dice, give you abilities, or sometimes there'll be upgrades for your tableau in which you can go ahead and upgrade an ability, finding Confuddle over here, and making it stronger so that you have a slightly better ability in play. You're going to spend combat points to play these cards, but that's what you're doing as far as the upkeep phase. You're getting combat points and you're getting more cards. From there you have a main phase where you can play some of your cards, and from there you go to your offensive roll phase where you have three opportunities, very Yahtzee style, to roll dice and see what you want to activate. Right over here, I can start going for those over here. Let's see what we want to get over here. I have a 2, 3, and 4, which might be what I want to go for. If I go through 2, 3, and 4 right now, maybe I can get a small straight. So let's go ahead and go my second roll. And I have a 3 and a 2. That's not looking great. Now, I have a choice at this point. I could lock this in for safety. I think I'm going to lock this in for safety and hope for a 5 or a 1 over here. And we did not get that, but we do have this, which means I can go ahead and activate any combination of abilities that match this pattern. Which means I can either activate these three to deal 6 damage with Mockery. Alternatively, I think that's really alternatively, I can go ahead and do Confuddle, where I can inflict Spellbound and deal 8 damage, which seems like the better choice. I've upgraded Confuddle already with my fictional uh, drawing a card and placing it down. And I'm going to grab Spellbound, I'm going to put it down on my opponent, and you're going to have these specific unique abilities. Every character is going to have their own tokens with positive and negative effects. And you're going to take, uh, you're going to take Spellbound, and you're going to deal 8 damage to your opponent. They're going to go ahead and go through their defensive roll phase, where they can go ahead and roll 3 dice. And in this case, we have three dice, and we grab the following. On two hammers, I can throw or retrieve Mjolnir, so I'll go ahead and throw it at Loki, dealing one damage straight to Loki. is going to be popping back and forth across the course of the game, and that is basically... And then on this, gain Electrolysis over here, so we're going to gather this. This is going to be an opportunity to... We're going to be, have the opportunity to draw those, to, to expend those to draw cards. So you're going to have this, this phase in the game. We're going to be rolling dice in your offensive roll phase. Once you go through three rolls, you're going to spend it on one ability or another on your board. You're going to do what the ability says. Your opponent generally has the opportunity to do a defensive roll phase, unless it's undefendable damage. And from there, you go back to another main phase where you can continue to play more cards, and then turn passes to your opponent, and you go back and forth, back and forth. That is Dice Throne. Marvel Dice Throne doesn't really change that. Marvel Dice Throne just adds Marvel characters on top of the Dice Throne universe, and gives you the same basic style of gameplay, but with the characters you know and love from Marvel. Past that, that's, that's really everything that's going on here. You're going to go back and forth until one player is down to zero. There are other player modes if you're playing with multiple players, either team-based or free for all as far as just taking everyone down and that's Marvel Dice Throne. Which brings us to the review part of this game, the review part of this video, starting off with ease of play. Marvel Dice Throne or Dice Throne in general, and most of what I say here applies to the Dice Throne universe in general, I am specifically talking about Marvel here and I'll also be ranking my favorite characters in this series from what I've played so far, well I've played them all so far, but where I am with them so far. Uh, but Marvel Dice Throne is a good solid game. It's a game that as far as the accessibility, as far as the ease of play, it is very easy to dive into. It's basically Yahtzee, roll three dice, uh, roll, roll the dice, roll five dice, roll them three times, go through the pattern until you eventually figure out what ability you want to activate. Draw cards and add combo points at the beginning of your turn. Try to figure out the combination of cards you're going to play to modify dice, whether tipping your opponents or tipping your own. Use the specific unique aspect of your characters in order to maximize whatever pa pattern or strategy you're going for in the game. Try to upgrade the abilities you're going to be utilizing most often, but don't waste your combat points and the abilities you don't think you're using anyways, as you try to eventually take down your opponent before they take you down. It is very easy to go through, it's very easy to play, it's very easy to teach, it's incredibly accessible in terms of the gameplay. It takes five minutes to teach the game to get someone up and running and play it, and it plays in generally around half an hour, although that can vary. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking, starting off the bat with the amazing art and production. 
Something that's held true for the Dice Throne universe since I first played it way back with the original Season 1 before it even got the big box production is this game looks beautiful. The game over here, the Dice Throne game over in general just looks beautiful. All the art, all the production, these revised player boards they started adding in Season 2, everything just looks amazing and everything else makes it makes it, makes you want to play the game. Between the player trays you have, the specific player trays that hold all the components, everything nicely sorted in there so you can have little packs of characters, uh, between how easy it is to table, between how accessible the game is all these things make you want to table the game and it's an excellent filler game as well it's an excellent filler game in terms of being a game that plays in generally half an hour or less gives you enough variety to the experience between the characters you can play with that you have reason to dive in again and again and it's just rolling dice back and forth yasi style trying to trigger the right abilities trying to upgrade your character and trying to figure out who's going to win today loki versus thor scarlet witch versus black panther uh, captain marvel versus doctor strange figuring out which pair up which team up is going to win the day it is accessible it is, looks beautiful it is easy to play it is a great filler game it gives you a good sense of progression as you level up your character my favorite part of the game easily is finding the cards and trying to level up your abilities so you can get more powerful so you can activate your confuddle more often than other abilities is because your confuddle is now better than your other abilities and so it'll pay off better than your other abilities it is simple accessible variable rewarding all good simple things as far as what i don't like about the game starting off the bat which is there's not enough depth to the choices you're making marvel dice stone is accessible and the accessible and simple and all those keywords that make it an easy game to table also does take away a little bit from just how deep the experience can be in terms of this is a game where you're rolling dice and generally going for the obvious move there's not a ton of depth to how you're going to play a character. There's not a ton of depth to which abilities you're going to try to activate. You're going to roll the dice and see which of these rolls. Let's see what we got over there. You got a one, a five, a two, one, two, three, five. Okay, well, I can probably go for that four over there. We got two rolls over here. Well, I got a four. No, I got a six. That changes the equation. Maybe I'll go for this one over here. There we go. I'll just roll this, see what we get. And we got another five. Let's go ahead and activate Vilify. Generally, the choices you're making are going to be fairly scripted around how your initial role plays out and the abilities you have and haven't upgraded. There is going to, there are going to be times where you're making a little bit more decisions, but generally I find them to be on the low end. You're trying to deal damage to your opponent and you're trying to take them out and you're trying to power through those 50 health before they power through yours, trying to use whatever tips or tricks at your disposal based on the character you're utilizing. There's not a ton of depth and there's not a ton of variety either. The nature of Dice Stone as an experience means that in this set over here, we have eight different characters and then in the large larger dice one universe as well there's another 16 characters there plus two more with santa versus Ra santa versus krampus but even if you're just focusing on marvel dice Throne, within eight characters there's only so much variability you're going to find in the experience a basic example you can find over here is going to be your basic starting spell over here markery on three of a kind deal six damage four of a kind deal seven five of a kind deal eight and over here on, on thor we have four five and seven instead of six seven and eight but this time you throw Mjolnir, which when you throw Mjolnir, you deal a damage. So most of the time you're going to have a very strong commonality between the fact that they're all dealing various points in damage. There's a strong overlap to the types of abilities and the combinations of things that you're rolling. They'll have abilities such as drawing extra cards or you're adding a status effect, but there's only so many different ways you can count up to a number. And with eight characters and upgrades and eight different characters in the set, unless you have a ton of, of complexity to each character, they're going to tap out as far as how variable the character choice actually is. There are differences, to be very clear. But there are more similarities than there are differences between the decks of cards which often have a lot of similarities between the character abilities which have a lot of general deal seven damage and do this one thing what does that one thing do well it negates one damage or it causes an extra damage or it lets you do an extra way of dealing a damage there are some characters that give you a little bit more interesting decisions but i find most characters have a small degree of variability and a large degree of commonality making it fun to dive into other characters but fun with a limited sense of just how fun that variability can be as far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, this is a pure luck game. If you don't like Yahtzee style rolling the dice and re-rolling and re-rolling, this is not a game for you. Yes, there's some degree of strategy as far as, okay, great, this is my starting roll. What am I most likely to get based on the starting roll? But past that, you are a victim to the dice. That player who rolls three sixes on their first roll and then gets to go for their ultimate, that's going to feel a little bit more unfair compared to the fact that you haven't rolled more than a single six of the entire game. And the asymmetric aspect of the game, despite the fact that I said the characters are not that variable, does mean it is very easy to lose this game and feel that you lost because the other player had the better better character. If you're playing against Loki and you keep missing because he keeps playing down his, his cards that help him just vanish in puff of smoke, that's going to feel frustrating. 
the luck of the draw, the fact that every single time, despite the fact that there's one in three chance, every single time you keep huffing and missing, it's going to feel frustrating and you're going to be able to easily blame it on the character differences. So the asymmetric aspect combined with the luck can easily make this feel like a game where you don't have enough control or agency and that might make it a game that's not for you. As far as final thoughts on Dice Throne, and when I'm done with final thoughts and recommendations, I'll go ahead and rate my characters in the order that I like them. But starting off the bat, as far as final thoughts, Marvel Dice Throne is a game that I thoroughly enjoy. Dice Throne in general is a game that I thoroughly enjoy. But it's a game that is always fun, always happy to play it, will never turn it down, but also it doesn't give me a rush. It's a game that the first time I played it, it did give me a rush. The first time I dove into it, it gave me, oh my gosh, this is so much fun, just rolling dice, activating abilities. But the more I dive into other characters, the more I feel that the giant wealth of characters they have access to, they are limited in how different they are, and the dice rolling does get old at a certain point, and the patterns and the st strategies get old at a certain point, and for me it's a game that I still consistently enjoy, I still think it's beautiful, I still think it's an excellent filler, it's still the kind of game I'm happy to pull out when there's two people sitting down, and you just want to like play something quick, simple, especially if you're playing with uh, someone who's a little bit less heavy in on the, ga the, the gamer end of things. It is a great gateway game, it is beautiful, it is excellent, it's just also light at the same time. For me, it's a 3.5 out of 5. Very solid in what it's doing, very pretty, very attractive, but a lot more pretty than it is good, if that makes sense. Still good, still good, but more pretty than it is good. As far as other game recommendations, if you're looking for other games, uh, generally in terms of other games that give a similar weight class, you're going to find King of Tokyo and Marvel United are good recommendations. King of Tokyo is also going to lean into that Yahtzee style of dice rolling, but giving it to you in a monster fighting arena in which one player is trying to be the King of Tokyo and ultimately gain more victory points while the other players pound them down. And then in Marvel United, you're not going to be playing, you're not going to be rolling dice, rather you'll be playing cards as you try to work together to defeat one of a variety of villains, and again, an equally light but equally fun and accessible looking game. Well, fun, accessible good looking game that is fun and accessible. As far as ranking my Dice Throne characters so far and giving you a brief overview of what they do, starting from the bat, we're gonna start with just lowest to lowest to least lowest, I guess, which probably should have pulled these out the other order, but we have Captain Marvel is my least favorite Dice Throne character. Uh, she's purely direct damage. There's not a ton of nuance to her character. She's a good starting choice to the Dice Throne universe. There's not any real complexity that's gonna mix you up, which is good for a starting character, but I find you'll quickly outgrow her. She's pure direct damage. A few adjustments and statuses that will give you more ways to deal more damage. Then from there we have Black Panther. Black Panther I'm torn on because at this point I already like Black Panther, but he is lower down as far as the list for me. Black Panther gives you a few little tips and tricks. The Vibranium Armor that will both uh, protect you and deal extra ricochet damage back at your opponents. A little bit more depth than Captain Marvel, but still on the accessible side. Then we have Loki. Loki over here on the table. Loki I kind of enjoy, and I like Loki as a character in the Marvel Universe a lot, but I actually don't love his deck of three cards in this game. I find that the one in three shot of either dealing full damage, half damage, or completely whiffing, because of the nature of that fact that you can keep doing that again and again, Loki can very quickly feel either completely unfair if he draws too lucky, or completely like a waste of time if your opponent keeps drawing the right card. I find it's a little bit too much, a little bit too much dependent on the situation, and while I like the theory and the premise of what he's going for, didn't overall like those decks of cards. Then we have Miles Morales, Spider-Man Miles Morales who is very weak, but has this fun ability where you can kind of take double turns. So if you get these extra combo actions, you're able to take two turns in a row. Only a few actions will actually give you those, but you can get a strong one-two punch sense if you properly go for them. So Miles heavily rewards you for going for certain abilities that give you combos, at which point you'll then trigger into another hit att attack, making it very feel very Spider-Man-y. A little, little weaker, a little faster, a little more resilient, but getting some extra attacks in on your turn. Then we have Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch has a few abilities going for her, but one of the things I particularly enjoy is the fact that she can modify dice both for you and for your opponent. She can make it harder for your opponent to get things that they want, she can make it easier for you to get patterns that you want, as well as a few other statuses that will roughly buzz your opponents in annoying and frustrating ways as they play the game. And from there we have Thor. Thor is one that I actually didn't love that much at first, but he has grown to me over multiple plays. Thor is also very much like Captain Marvel, is a very vanilla direct damage character, but the thing I like about Thor is their ability to discard cards from your hand to ping your hammer back and forth. Various abilities will allow you to throw your hammer out or withdraw it, but if you actually get to cascade a bunch of cards from your hand, you can ping your opponent down for those last few damage. More than a few times I've gotten to the end of a game when someone's down to a few health and I'm like, actually, you only have three health left. I'm not even going to go through this phase. I'm just going to go ahead, discard, 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 pinging Mjolnir back and forth and dealing the last few damage. I find that ridiculously satisfying and it's really leveled up just how much I enjoy Thor. Then from there we have my two favorites. 
which are Doctor Strange, who has a ton of spells, a little on the weaker side, I find. I actually don't find, I don't think I have one with him yet, but Doctor Strange has a bunch of spells that you get to prep, and I like the process of prepping and casting spells. Makes it feel a little, well, more unique than other characters, and I enjoy that aspect of just feeling unique. And then speaking of feeling unique, Black Widow is my favorite character, who very heavily leans into my personal playstyle, because she gets more powerful the more upgrades she plays. The more you put upgrades down on your board, the more powerful abilities get, and so she wants you to upgrade five, six abilities, because her abilities are going to get more powerful, dealing extra damage per upgrade she has, which is very much the way I like to play this game, because upgrades are my favorite part, and so Black Widow, as a result, is my favorite character from these eight. And that's my review of Marvel Ice Stone. Marvel Ice Stone from Roxley and their OP, a very solid, very enjoyable game that I both like a lot and have all of it, while also being a game that I enjoy and don't pull out all the time because I just enjoy it. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoy this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.